Composing is a brilliant tool that allows you to tap into what you want to hear as a music creator. When you focus on composing, it helps your improvisation, it helps your bigger picture goals as a musician, and it helps you find the sound you hear in your mind and put it out there to the world. This process really helps you reflect on who you are and who you are not as a music creator. For me, I always had the objective of composing because my dad is a composer. An instrument was just this thing that you sit down and write songs on. Through the years and through all the different places I went and the people I met, the urge to become a improviser, a player, a virtuoso, I guess, emerged. And that's where I found that my identity is to combine the two. Through listening to many different music, we find our own taste in music. And that taste is inspiring all the fragments and pieces that we later connect to a whole which is ourselves. Composing, is, as I said, is an amazing tool to find your own voice. And I find that through the years, composing for different groups and different ensembles, I find and found a direction and a set of tools that help me become a more authentic composer. And today I want to share them with you. Now working on my second album, I'm learning that these tools are really becoming more natural. I'm really happy with the process, the authentic, the natural process of this second album. If you haven't checked out my first album, Dive, you can check it in the description of this video. The process that I go through a lot is just having the idea in my mind. In a sense, it's not only in your mind because it also goes into your bones because you feel a certain groove. It's as if you're almost like holding the piece in your mind's eye before it's even created. You see the picture on the canvas before you even lay a brush on that canvas. Something that really helps me is recording myself sing or hum anything, basically. It can be something that I'm just picking up from my imagination. I can do it right now. That was just a phrase, right? That is something that I can now take and, and say, okay, that's a melody. It has this character to it. And it's obviously coming from a wish that has emerged from me listening to a lot of types of music. And I embrace that melody. I feel like this is something I want to put out there. And by embracing myself, I embrace that melody. And then the next part after you have kind of like melodies is to find a nice form where all those melodies can kind of like come together to form a composition. So now you have the form and you can do that by, you know, using a notation software like Sibelius, Finale, maybe you use Guitar Pro, just to have a visual representation of where you're going with your melodies, with your composition. Or you can simply work on it and record it. Cubase, Logic. So now you have that picture, right? And you're maybe maybe you're taking that melody and you're experimenting with different harmonies. You have the picture. Well, now there's a few stuff you can do. You can ask yourself, what is this composition meant to be? So you're always keeping that vision in mind. You know, when the melody just emerged all the way to the point where you're arranging, orchestrating and even meeting with the band, which I'll get into later. You have a form, even if it's not perfect. Now you can start creating contrast in your arrangement so that can be maybe a bass line right like how does the bass line feel with the melody and how does the harmony reflect on the melody is it giving it the colors that you wanted to if you're including solo sections what are these solo sections going to be are there going to be the solo section over the harmony is it going to be a different part Whereas like the reason that the solo section is here is to bring a different mood. And is the melody going to be played in unison or in different voices? So there's so many questions, but all of them come into picture after you have the general idea, after you have the actual 
form and melody for me personally. Now, if you don't have ideas, something you can do is simply start working on treating yourself better. That can be taking walks, it can be your diet, it can be exercise, it can be taking showers, cold showers, hot showers, whatever. It's just to distract yourself from getting in your own way. Be learning other people's songs or practicing fundamental elements. If you're learning arpeggios, triads, theory, voice leading, for me personally, it's a healthy habit to take those ideas and start immediately creating with them. Those mini etudes or mini songs, mini tracks that through them you discover what you want to say with those materials. Not every idea you're going to document is going to be your next hit, so to speak, right? It depends on the music you're creating. But the fact that you're putting yourself in a place where creating is a habit and recording yourself singing into a voice message or maybe even sending some ideas to a friend, a musician friend, that, uh, that's always good, which I also want to talk about the power of community when comp composing. Just creating that habit is going to allow you to tap into the inner musician creator and definitely starting to find a voice. If you think about all those artists, they all have that one output that they're really good at. And I think it's, it's good to appreciate each one on their own voice because they had to find it. They had to embrace that that's who they are. They had to find out who they are not so they can start doubling down on who they are. The power of community. Something that really helped me and my experience with creating music is when you create and you start creating with other people, if you stay very open to their input, especially if you're giving it to musicians that you admire, like the musicians that I'm working with on my previous album and on my upcoming album, they all have these amazing ideas. So whenever I give them a musical piece, I'm like, first of all, do whatever you want with it. The drummer, I never send a drummer like drums that I programmed, I say, what do you hear? And then from there, I say, I love that, do more of that. This is beautiful. This is really nice, but can you try that? That can be something I say. Rarely will I say something like, I don't like that, replace that. Like, I don't even remember one time that I said that. That's my way of creating. Of course, there's other ways of creating, right? It really depends on what you're going for and the philosophy be behind the way you create, which is just another representation of who you are and who you are not. Remember that there's videos of people recording themselves playing over cats or dogs that just touched the piano and created the melody, but they put so much arrangements and ideas into it that it actually becomes a pleasant musical piece. Some of the times, just to give you a proportion of, you already have so many ideas in you and everyone has ideas in them. It's the execution part, which is usually what takes the most effort. So now I wanna share with you a very cool video which was made in the pandemic era, which is, was not that long ago, where the drummer that I'm very privileged to work with, which by the way also has an amazing YouTube channel, Yogev Gabay, he and I, we, we were just sending each other ideas and I sent him an idea on my phone immediately, just a voice message of me kind of like scatting some ideas around and he surprised me with the bass player, our friend Leo Rosari, and he created himself playing drums over it. And Leo actually transcribed the idea that I just scattered into those WhatsApp message. And he created another layer of bass complementing it. And then they sent it to me and I recorded the guitars on it. I was totally surprised. It's a really cool video that I want to share with you where Yogev edited it also. And um, he put together a video that really shows how you can basically create music from anything. Hey there. So last week we released a track that has kind of a cool story and we thought we can share it with you. Me and these two clowns have been creating these very short songs just for fun for the past few months. And usually they start by me sending a drum track 
random drum track and they just put guitar and bass on it. Sometimes we call in more guests, but usually that's it. After I send my drum part, they add kind of whatever comes to their mind and that's how we create these songs. So they get to react to my drum part. I get kind of tired of the fact that I can't get to react to their music as well. So I asked them to send me something. Daniel Weiss took charge and he sent me something on WhatsApp, which I very innocently thought would be a guitar line. Long story short, we took this thing and actually made a track out of it. And this is how. First of all, I have to beat map it. Beat mapping it means that I have to put a click on it in order to make some rhythmic sense of what he recorded. Then I'll probably just chart it out so I can practice it and I can send it to the guys so they can see how Daniel's rhythms relate to my click track. Now I just have to go and practice it. So I just got the transcription from Yugev. I'm gonna try and sight read the rhythm uh, slower. Let's see how this goes. Two thousand years later. <laughs> All right, not too bad for sight reading. Now let's go to work. I'm gonna try to make some music out of it, I guess. Ten to ten, dun dun dun. So maybe something like that. I'm gonna start with that and let's see where it gets us. Like super cool, it sounds like with a lot of kicks and stuff, like pretty hectic. And they told me to also add some of my layers. So my thoughts are maybe going some unison at the beginning to give some, some introduction to this hectic groove, then going like a bit of counter line to create more tension and movement. Some and then maybe go for some ambient stuff in the part that will come. So my thing is to do something like that. So I just received an email from Yoga and he told me to make a video while I opened the file, so let's see. No way. That's awesome. Wow. Well, I guess I'm gonna record some guitars on it. Alright. That was fun. Kind of sketched everything out and then I'm gonna learn everything I played and just play it. But basically, here's the guitar channels alone. So, sometimes I'm using some weird sounds. I'm um, using this picture here, which I kind of like. So yeah, this was definitely fun. Can't wait to see how it all comes together.
So now for the takeaway part. Number one, allow yourself to enjoy who you became as a artist, as a musician, as a guitar player, as anything. Just enjoy it and embrace it and create with it. Number two, if you're feeling stuck or uninspired, go for a walk, exercise, anything that you know helps you and then tap into creativity even if it's the slightest creativity some days you'll have this amazing output where you can just keep going and going and some days you'll have just this little shining star right record that shining star document it just voice message whatever works for you the le next level is embrace that idea embrace your ideas develop them start structuring them form harmony but be consistent on working on them and then number four once you've worked on them for a while you structured them and they feel like there is a whole picture you need to learn also how to neglect them because nothing is perfect and there is a um, sentence that has helped me a lot better done than perfect but not in a negative way, in a way where you embrace it that you've put a ton of structure and energy into creating that thing and it's time to neglect it. In a way, my album Dive, well, it was neglected, but in a good way, because I composed it with Yaniv and then arranged it. And when it was time to just go for it, we stepped into the studio, we recorded two or three takes per song, and that's it. And it was time to neglect it and move on. And of course, then f just focus on, on putting it out there. If you, that's what you're into, you know, putting it out, putting your music out is a whole other video. <laughs> How do you put your music out? So hopefully this rant gave you some perspective. I can keep talking about this subject for another hour and maybe I'll do it sometime. But you know, the best thing you can do to help me create more of those stuff is let me know about some questions that you have on the subjects and also just share your perspective. We are all here to learn from each other. Thanks for being here, by the way. If you haven't yet, please subscribe, hit the bell like this video and check out my online programs on wiseguitar.com. The link to do that is in the description of this video. You can also move on to the next video, which is right here somewhere. Anyway, thanks for listening. I'll see you soon.